Standing Bow Pose Part 2, arguably the most dramatic posture from our lineage in Calcutta. We're going to go over the intermediate and advanced versions of this pose, so stay tuned. Hello everybody, if this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Jimmy Barkin, I've been teaching hot yoga for over 40 years. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, hit the notification bell, then you get notified when I post a new video, and hit the like button anytime you're enjoying this video. Standing Boat Pose. In Sanskrit, it's Dandayamana Don Yur Asana. One of the easiest ones to remember in Sanskrit, in our teacher training programs, I say, think of it as Don Yur Asana or Don like Don Quixote from Mad La Mancha in year like 2022, happens to be, or 2021. Don, year, asana. So we went over this pose in detail, especially with the for the beginning version in this video. So I want you to check that out after this is over and you can go into more of the beginner intermediate version. And I just touched on the advanced, but I want to. I made this video, this part two video, for this reason. I want to really un you understand the concept of the standing bow. And if you're stuck, if you've been stuck in this pose for a long time, understanding intellectually, having an intellectual understanding will be everything. For me, it's huge. So I did talk about it, and let's let's review it. The percentage of the body that's required for you to be successful in this pose. 40% is the back bend. That happens automatically. You definitely don't want to overarch your position. You don't want to be in the pose and overarch like that. You want to just let it happen naturally. That's 40%. 20% is the extension of your shoulder that you're kicking with and the back hip. So that back hip and shoulder have to extend back behind you. That's 20%. What's the remaining 40%? Drum roll. The hamstring flexibility of your standing leg. That being said, and this is the key, and I said it again in that video, I'm gonna say it again now because it's so important. How high you kick your leg initially depends on the flexibility of the hamstring of your standing leg. So this is one of the poses where I wouldn't want a beginning person to look at the advanced person because the advanced person has to kick all the way up to release that back hip, but they have the flexibility to lower down to where the stomach's parallel to the floor because they have that range of motion in their hamstring. If your hamstring's tight and you kick all the way up, you're not gonna be able to lower down. Your hamstring isn't gonna let you. So what's gonna happen if you're tenacious, you're, your body's gonna start to twist to whatever side you're doing. If you're doing the right side, it's gonna twist this direction. It's gonna, the hamstring's gonna push you away. Or if you find your head starts to turn, it's because the hamstring is pushing you away. It doesn't want all that pressure coming down on it. So as a beginner, I want you to look at that video again and not kick too high. So how high should you kick? And that's really where the practice is. You want to kick up just enough so you're able to get down to where your stomach's parallel to the floor. Because if you're too high, you're only using 60% of your percentage. When you get down to where the stomach's parallel to the floor, you're using 100% of your, of your potential. So we're gonna head over to the Fort Lauderdale studio with Barkin teacher, new graduate, Kat, and let's see what we will see. So now here's standing bow, but this is gonna be more of the intermediate advanced version. We did a video a few months back. You can see it, this video here, standing bow, where we covered the beginning version. We really covered a general version. But in this video, this is part two, and I want to show you the more advanced intermediate version. When we covered this pose in this video, I talked about the grip, it's a tricky grip. If you're a yoga teacher, you're gonna watch your beginning students because they're all gonna one twist their hands. They're either gonna grab this way or this way, but we turn the hand this direction, so the elbow's on the inside. But now I want to add to that. When you start to get more in the intermediate level, you're going to start to move your grip from the ankle down a little bit to the leg. So I'm going to have Kat face this direction, pick up her left foot and see it a little bit better. So she picks up her left right where the top of the foot and the ankle meet, right here. And as you start to get a little more advanced, you can now bring your hand just a little bit lower. So you're on the leg, not on the ankle, on the leg. And now here's the key. You want to keep your wrist straight. You don't want to protrude that wrist. And you want to try to grab a soft part of the leg. Or if you're a little bit higher, even where the ankle and the foot are, you want to find a soft part that you can squeeze. You can relax 
relax for a second, okay? So it's like the archer that's pulling the bow against the arrow. You're gonna squeeze the grip and you have that feeling of squeezing. It's gonna allow you to be more elastic. Now we talked about, I talked about it in the intro, how, how you kick initially depends on the flexibility of that sandy leg hamstring. So now you get to the intermediate level, you can start kicking a little bit higher. And everybody's different and every day is different. So you're gonna figure that out. So the cat will pick up her left. It's gonna now just below the ankle. When your foot can be maybe six inches or what is that, uh, 15 centimeters above your head, you can start going down lower below your ankle. So she kicks up a little bit more, but not too much, as she lowers down into her position. And this right arm has to be real strong. She can drop the shoulder, but continue to keep the arm lifted. She looks right over her fingertips. Come down a little bit more, where that stomach's parallel to the floor. Maybe one of the biggest corrections I've made in my entire yoga career is the knee wants to go outside to the, on this side, we're doing the left side, to the left of the foot. So watch Kat. She's gonna do this position, and I'm gonna show you incorrectly first. She picks up, and it's really about the hip and the rotation and the stiffness of the hip. That knee is sticking out to the side, to the left of her foot. What she wants to do is get the knee underneath the foot. And when she does that, Look at the position of her, her left foot. The foot's coming right out of the back of the head and it's flat up against that front wall if you had a mirror at home. Opposed from here to here. So imagine my elbow is my knee and my hand is my foot. When that knee is turned out to the side, your foot's gonna turn and face that direction. But when that knee comes underneath the foot, now your foot's flat up against that front wall and hopefully you have a mirror at home all hot yogis love our front mirrors you can see it in the mirror you can put your foot flat up against that front mirror now that you get even more advanced it's actually really about the flexibility of your hamstring when we talk about it again in the, in the intro now cat can kick even a little higher so she's going to face this direction picks up her right leg because it's going to be right below the ankle at this level she's not going to be up at the ankle and now, because she has that flexibility in her hamstring, she can kick way up at first, way up, and have the flexibility to lower down. And now for the fullest expression, and a little trick that I did talk about briefly in that video we did a few months ago, and standing bow. And so let's watch Kat do it first. She's gonna kick way up as high as she can, but she has that flexibility in her hamstring to get down low. She's just gonna kick, 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 kick. Remember, this left arm is nice and strong. She's gonna lower herself down as she looks to the front mirror. Now here's the trick. She's gonna look to the side mirror to see her leg. And now I say, now straighten your leg. And she goes, oh, look at that. And then she looks back again. That visual is everything. That just got her to straighten her leg beautifully. And this left arm that she's reaching for is real strong. And there it is. That's the fullest version, the intermediate to advanced level of standing bow. A little applause for Pat, getting that leg way up in the air. I'll see you at the next video. So if you watched that last part of the video when I had Kat look to the side, if you have the skill to maintain your balance, looking at the front mirror, and if you have a side mirror, look over to the side, still maintain your balance, get that visual and straighten the leg, and then look back to the front. Because that's the first time I was able to ever straighten my leg in the standing bow. I had that side mirror visual. Makes all the difference. But some of you may not be able to have that control. So you may want to slowly begin to maybe look in a, in a corner of the side mirror to see yourself from the side, but then control it and come back to center. But this is a great tip to get you to that straighten that standing leg, that last couple inches or the last few centimeters. You're so close and you don't realize it. And then you look to the side and boom, there it is. Bang. So that is our episode for today. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, hit the notification bell. Any questions or comments you have, put them down below. I get to all the comments and I'll see you the next video. Bye guys.